Hello, listeners, and welcome to Youth Ventures Podcast, PDX Business Spotlight. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of PDX Business Spotlight. Today, we are so excited to welcome Megan, who is the founder and owner of Oracle Wellness Co. So, Megan, could you please give an overview of who you are, what your business is about, and how you got started? Sure thing. Thanks for interviewing me. I always love to tell my story. So, let's see. I am Megan. B is my name, and I founded Oracle Wellness Co. in 2018. And it really stemmed from my desire to tap into a deeper purpose in my work. As I was a cannabis chef in the legal in- industry mm-hmm. uh, here in Portland, Oregon, and and that was mostly fulfilling the recreational side of my ability. But as I dove deeper into my work, I realized that cannabinoids served a deeper purpose on a medicinal level to help people heal and reclaim themselves, essentially. So that's how Oracle Wellness Co. came to be. And. Megan, who or what inspired you to start your business? It's a combination of things. It's really, there was a place of needing to survive. So, you know, using skill sets that I had gained from a place of survival, I had to make a decision, you know, about the future of my family. I I have children. I have Mm -hmm. a son who was alive at the time, you know, when I made the decision to shift into working with plants specifically. And so he's definitely an inspiration in, in my drive to build this legacy brand. And also people that I meet who have chronic pain. I am personally not one to suffer from chronic pain, but I do have a, I guess, magnetism, if you would say, as an empath to those who suffer. And I wanted to help other people feel better, which in turn helps me feel better. So, yeah. Wow. First of all, I really love how you truly followed your passions and with your situation and really with your love for serving the community, you were able to not only start, but also like continue on like such a beautiful business and become so successful. Thank you. And Megan, the pandemic has truly played a huge role in all of our lives, but it has truly impacted businesses the most. For example, it forced so many businesses to shut their doors. It lowered so many businesses' sales, but it also opened up newer avenues. For example, allowing businesses to set up a more online shop. So how has the pandemic affected your business personally? Has it had upsides or downsides? I say the pandemic has affected us in in both ways. You know, there are positive ways in which we thrived and also negative ways in, in which we had to adjust. But I tend to utilize situations for the positive. I, I try mm-hmm. to find the light in all situations. So, you know, some of my entrepreneurial friends, they still call me a pivot queen, you know. So I like to figure out another way to just kind of pivot if necessary. You know, I, I think it's it's more or less a survival mechanism, again, a defense mechanism that I'm mm-hmm. kind of innate with, given the upbringing and background of growing up in a, you know, in a city life. I mean, e-commerce was already in existence for us. I think that the positive side of the pandemic with my business in particular is that it forced people to slow down and really consider their health regimen, their self-care regimen, their wellness. Because Mm -hmm. a society was stuck in a a cycle of just going, right, and and feeding the machine, right, being another Mm -hmm. cog in the system, but not really stopping to consider their own needs. People began looking for tools, and they were looking for natural tools. I mean, I I don't know if, if, if you witnessed the stat, but cannabis thrives. (laughs) <laughs> during the pandemic. The numbers didn't lag at all. Plant was definitely something that I think people had more time to consider how to better incorporate it into their wellness regimen during the pandemic. And, and we benefited from that, for sure. 
I love how you truly have such a positive attitude and even like despite all the negativity around you, you were able to really use that as a plus and really allow your business to thrive even within the pandemic. Thank you. And Megan, how has being a person of color affected your business, either positively or negatively? Before I initially started my business, I worked for one of the larger cannabis companies here in Portland, Oregon, and I helped to establish their edible line within Mm. the company. Since the company had been established in 2014, I was their first woman of color hire in about 2017. Wow. Um, if you can imagine to enter a environment that is not really adapt to maybe different cultures or an, an East Coast girl like me is, is how I'm going to put it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and what that means is that, you know, I am a go-getter and I do come with, you know, other skill sets that may be foreign to, I guess, Western ideals, right? The West Coast is a little bit different how they work sometimes. I brought a different outlook, and that made me hyper-visual, uh, let alone being a brown person in that environment, a brown woman, the first one. So I was hyper-visual, and that experience, in, in a nutshell, I was definitely what you would call a hidden figure. My work, you know, was, was utilized, my skill sets were utilized, my ideals were utilized, and then I was essentially disposed of. That, in turn, is what also inspired me to start my own company to where I could build my own table and chair, if you would say, because my attempt to enter the industry and uh, help support another business fell short. Honestly, not a surprise, right? In history of people itself. So. Yeah. But it was definitely inspiring for me to go hard. You know, I had uprooted my family from the East Coast to the West Coast with you, legal cannabinoid medicine. So it was all in for me. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. Wow. Um, I really love how, like, every time you did face negativity, you always, like, fought against it. And, like, I really loved your determined nature in, like, everything. And even, like, the process of starting your business and having that dream and accomplishing it in such a wonderful way. Mm, thank you. And Megan, what advice might you have for young entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs of color? And what are some experiences you could talk about that might motivate or inspire them? Sure. So um, as a young entrepreneur, you have the advantage of being young. (laughs) And therefore, you can take chances and fail. It is important that you fail. And I think a lot of times people run away from failure. Mm-hmm. Because we've been given the perception that that is a flaw. And in some circumstances, it can be. But I think the positive outlook of failure is that you learn a lesson, an important lesson, so that when you go when you go to attempt to try to execute you know, a similar path, you know what not to do, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, failure should be embraced as a positive thing. So if you're an entrepreneur and, you know, you have a lot of naysayers in your corner, prove them mm-hmm. wrong. Embrace that. You know, everything that we want is on the other side of fear. And, and fear can be essentially viewed as uh, false evidence appearing as real. So when we, when we change our perception, as an entrepreneur, we're, we're going against the grain here. And things are going to look different for you. In comparison to someone else, comparison is the greatest thief of joy. So never compare yourself to anybody because your vision is your vision if no one else respects your vision. And, and don't be afraid to create something similar. Um, my favorite example of that is, you know, if you go to the grocery store and you go to buy some bread, how many choices of bread do you have? A lot, right? Yeah. So go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so when you're an entrepreneur, you know, you just have to go for it. And and I think the greatest example of that is somebody may make something and there may be something similar. But the most important thing is understanding your client, understanding your demographic. Mm -hmm. You know, so go ahead and and make a loaf of bread, but do it well, do it better. If if you're going to do anything, do it well. Definitely. I totally agree, Megan. 
Thank you so much for that advice. And talking a little bit more about your product, can you talk more about how you formulate your products and how you choose your ingredients? Oh, you know, there's a very spiritual connection. It's, it's I call it vibrational, uh, vibrational cooking, of course. You know, I'll, I'll do research on how certain herbs can help the body and help them bring balance to, to ourselves, right? So a lot of times I'll create something based on what I see very common and which people are dealing with as far as ailments go. So my products, they aid with chronic pain mediation. Um, and I have some that are designed to help you sleep. Um, I've had a lot, of, a lot of clients who had a hard time sleeping. I have another product that helps with anxiety and depression, um, but also keeps you focused. So it's designed to be used during the day so that if you are one that suffers from chronic pain and anxiety and depression during the day, um, then you can utilize um, PDG in a picture form that will help you uh, get through your day. So... I write everything down in old school. I like to I like to write out my formulations, and it's very in, intentional in how it comes to be. You know, I, I source my medicinals locally when I can, and I like to work very closely with my hemp farmers that understand their processes because all of this is an energy exchange. And if you're going to put something into your body, it's really important that the energy and its intentions are pure especially when it's in alignment with your health and your wellness. That's my process. Wow. I really love how like each one of your products and each like condition that you're aiming to treat, you've really done the research behind everything and every single element of every product is completely thought through and it definitely does serve the results. Yes, absolutely. These are multi-use tools that I, I like to create. Some of my products you can use in three different ways, you know. But I definitely definitely strive to have these wellness solution tools, you know, self-care tools even, a, a part of one's regimen. Some people don't even have regimen that haven't considered one. So this would be like a great place to start if you're considering what a self-care wellness regimen or ritual could look like for you. I also work with birthing clients. My products have been incorporated into laboring and birthing as well as postpartum care uh, for birthing people. Wow. And Megan, yeah. how can people support your business? Oh, sure thing. I think word of mouth is the most powerful tool that is still mm -hmm. available to us. You know, just speaking about the brand, trying the products out, and you know, sharing your authentic testimony, you know, about mm -hmm. Oracle Wellness Co. Is, is definitely helpful for me. <laughs> <laughs> we also have subscriptions to where, you know, if you love a product, we send it to you, you know, anywhere from 30 to 60 days, how often you prefer it. No commitment. I cancel any time subscription plan. So that's also a wonderful mm -hmm. way to support us. Wow. And listeners, if you go to the description box of wherever you're listening to your podcast, you can click on the link and it will take you to Oracle Wellness Co.'s website. And from there, you can buy any of their products or their subscription based products as well. We will also link Megan social media links in the description box. So please do go support and follow them in any way you can even if it's just by liking or following or commenting on a post. Megan, are there any special projects or anything else you would like to plug? So yeah, in 2022, we are looking to optimize for a Corona So, you know, we are coming out with a few new products. We're tapping into intimacy this year because another interest of, of our clients. So we're looking to help people spice up other parts of their lives as well. Uh, so look out for that uh, coming in February. And um, we're also accepting birthing clients and families looking to integrate cannabinoids and terpenoids safely into their parenting experience. So I'll reach out for that at Oracle Services 
gmail.com. Wow. And listeners, once again, Megan's social media is linked in the podcast description box. So if you want to find out more about their updates, definitely go follow and support and you can figure out what new projects and products they have coming up. Thank you so much, Megan, for joining us on this episode of our podcast. Are there any final words that you wanted to say? Well, just sending blessings and gratitude to you. And I hope the rest of your New Year's bring you much abundance and joy. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And listeners, that is it from PDX Business Spotlight. Please be sure to join us in the next episode. Thank you for listening to PDX Business Spotlight by Youth Venture, and we hope to see you in the next episode.